can we return to the Greeks? I, I, I want to know, why were they so keen to trash the Persians? I mean, what was in it for them? What was in it for them was actually the birth of a sense of their own identity. You know, before the Persian Wars, um, there was no such thing as Greece, of course. There were city-states united by a language with its various dialects, but there was no real sense of being Hellenes together at all. This is why I suppose the myth of of Troy was so important to them. At least it gave them some kind of galvanizing unity. When the Persians emerged as this huge superpower in the East, and we shouldn't underestimate the roller coaster impact it had on the Greeks, it forced the Greeks to 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 come together. Uh, to repel this enemy, and it gave them um, a sense of purpose and a sense of identity. It never unified the Greeks per se. Don't forget, within you know thirty years of the Persian Wars, we're 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 into the the period of the Peloponnesian Wars, and even during the Persian Wars itself, I think it's very important to remember, and I've stressed this in my book, that this was not a united Greek front against Persia. There were many Greek city-states who fought for the Persians, who really believed that their future, uh, the, the, you know, the betterment of their people, lay with the Persian Empire than being alone, um, having to defend themselves against other warring uh, and hostile Greek city-states. And, but, but what happens is, of course, is, is that over the, the centuries, by the time, or well, even very close on, by the time we get to Herodotus writing some 60 years after Xerxes' invasion, we have a mythologizing process already at work. You know, Herodotus has got a very clear agenda. That is, he's writing a, 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 an inquiry into the wars for an Athenian audience. That's, that's, that's his base. And so what he tries to do in the histories, of course, is, is to create a mythology, a series of legends, in, in a way, in which Athens itself ta- takes prime place. It, it's the major player. And, of course, has to set itself up as a kind of mirror image against the, the, the despicable, despotic Persians. What's incredible is the, the legacy that that historical approach has had on Western uh, historians ever since. So uh, in the 19th century, John Stuart Mill was able to write, for instance, and this is really incredible. He once said, as an episode in British history... The Battle of Marathon is more important than the Battle of Hastings. That's really quite remarkable. That is quite a statement, yeah. Because there he's saying, of course, you know, that what we are as Europeans, as Westerners, we owe everything to the Greeks. And therefore this this moment when, you know, the Persians were repelled first at Marathon uh, and later on at Salamis in particular, uh, was really the the founding moment, the the cornerstone of Western civilization. And and that is, you know, that that's still a factoid which is distributed widely today. I noticed that a, a book has recently come out called um, something like the three battles that saved the West or, or something like that, you know, or saved democracy, whatever democracy was, you know, in its ancient form. I, I, I do speculate in the book what would have happened had the Greeks uh, succumbed to Persian power. I think that there's very a little prospect of the, of the Persians having destroyed this nascent democracy. After all, many of the Greek cities in Asia Minor, which were ruled by Persians, still continued as democracies because the Persians just didn't change the, you know, the institutions of the cities that they conquered anywhere in, in, in their empire. Um, so I think that high, highly likely that Athens would have become a satrapal centre for the rulership of Greece. But what would have happened, I think, is that um, from there, the Persians and their many Greek allies, including Athens then, of course, it would have been, would have stormed into the Peloponnesian and would have destroyed the Spartans, um, who were really actually the true despots of antiquity, of course. You know, I mean, there are no, you know, uh, you know worse kind of rulership than, than under Sparta. So it would have been a very um, different political look. But I don't think 
that the Persians would ever have destroyed the fledgling democracy. There would still have been drama. There would still have been sculpture. You know, I do not believe that, as as some people have said, you know, in, in their scaremongering, that we wouldn't have uh, emerged as a civilization had the Persians got there first. Whatever have happened, it's it's simply not the Persian way. But how much is this Greek hatchet job or retarded or obstructed research into the Persians in the West over the centuries? Well, it's there all the time, you know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's constantly being written and rewritten. It has inf- 